Okay, today we're going to talk about some things that are starting to really have something to do with physics. We're going to talk about velocity and momentum, which is a very important quantity indeed, and interactions and interactions causing change. So that's the agenda for today. We alluded uh, yesterday to the fact that, according to Isaac Newton, objects some object is going to, by default, move at constant speed in a straight line, which we can now say technically at constant velocity, unless it interacts with some object in the surroundings. So one of the key things we're doing when we talk this way is we're dividing the world conceptually into two pieces. We're considering some part of the world to be the system of interest. And it could be a very simple part of the world indeed, like a tennis ball or a single proton. That could be the system of interest. Everything else in the world is therefore part of the surroundings. And the game we're going to play is we're going to be able to predict the behavior of the system based on knowing its interactions with the surroundings, or conversely, we're going to be able to observe the behavior of the system and deduce its interactions with the surroundings. So that's the kind of thing we're going to, going to be doing. Now here is an example of um, the kind of thing we might be thinking about. We've said that if you see an object going at constant speed in a straight line, we know it's not interacting with anything. What if we saw an object behaving this way? So this is a little program written in VPython, which is a nice programming language that lets you, in a very simple way, write programs that model physics in 3D. But let's try this again. Let's run this program. And suppose we saw an object, which is a little purple ball here, doing this. Whoops. Let's back the camera off a little bit so we can see it. Okay, what does the blue arrow represent? It's direction. Is it just a direction, though? If it was a direction, that would be a univector, and it would have a constant length, wouldn't it? So it's got speed in there, too. Bigger, longer arrow means bigger speed. So, so that would be the velocity, wouldn't it, actually? Now, it turns out what I've really drawn there is momentum, but it's the same direction. as. Okay, well, if you saw an object doing this, how would you explain it? Would you say, well, objects just move that way? There's nothing around making it do that. That's just normal. Now, you'd probably say, gee, why is it doing that? That's a pretty odd thing for a, a ball in the middle of the air, not interacting with anything to be doing. How could it be doing that? Well, let's just make the surroundings of the, the ball visible. And we see that, for example, it could be act, interacting with objects in the surrounding like a spring that's anchored at the top to the ceiling. And that would make the interaction <coughs> with the surroundings could make the velocity of the ball change. Okay, that's not anywhere near as surprising as if it was doing it. <coughs> okay, what if we saw it doing doing this? So here's our ball. But this time, it's going to leave a trail so we can see how it's moving. OK. Kind of an interesting. I'm, now, I'm using the right button just to rotate around, to rotate the camera around in this scene so we can see that it's tracing out a kind of basket-shaped 3D pattern. Is its velocity changing? Yeah, it is. Must be interacting with something, we say. Okay, what on earth could it be interacting with? Well, let's see what is let's see what we have in here. 
Um, we'll just make the surroundings visible. Well, it's actually the same thing. It just started in a different location with a different initial velocity. Uh, same spring, same ceiling. We just started it differently. And it traces out this kind of interesting path in 3D space. Again, it had to interact with something to have its velocity change in that complicated way. <laughs> This may look pretty complicated, but it's actually a model that's going to be pretty easy for you to put together and experiment with. Um, after experimenting with the real system in lab, you can actually build a computational model to do this yourself using basic physics principles. So again, that's the, that's the basic game that we're going to be playing here. Um, so Newton said, an object travels in a straight line at constant speed, except if it interacts with objects in the surroundings, except to the extent that it uh, interacts with objects in the surroundings, which means that the amount of interaction uh, would influence its, the, the changes in its, in its velocity. So more interaction leads to more change, not a big surprise. 